Today, on April 16th of 2022, we went to the Crystal Bay Hotel, formerly the historic Sunset Hotel. This building is quite old, having been built in 1915 in an area that was sparsely inhabited in St. Petersburg. Essentially, it was uh, something that eventually grew due to the trolleys and was a place where people would come to stay while they looked at properties in the area. The spirits were here in 2006, but Christy and I were technically there for a birthday party, though we did get a little investigating done on the side. So the hotel actually opened in 1916 and charged $250 to $650 for the winter season. It was the first hotel beyond walking distance of downtown, and it did have celebrities such as Babe Ruth, Glenn Miller, Robert Kennedy, Marilyn Monroe, Al Capone and his family, the Three Stooges, and many other individuals who actually did stay there. The hotel had a bit of a problem after World War I, and actually the company that opened it went bankrupt, but there was a rebound with the land boom of the 1920s. During the Great Depression, the Sunset Hotel entered a period of financial uncertainty involving changes of ownership and management. Essentially, they were only open during the winter season from January through April, and it operated under both the American and European plans with the dining room open to the public. By 1939, completion of the Treasure Island Causeway opened the Gulf beaches to increase traffic, which initially improved the visibility of the Sunset Hotel. Although tourism had rebounded to some extent by 1940, the activation of military rationing and travel restrictions during World War II severely curtailed St. Petersburg's tourism-based economy. The Sunset Hotel does eventually recover from this and prospered in the night, late 1940s and the 1950s, and by 1958 was opened for year-round seasonal uh, use. The building was remodeled, and it did include enclosing some of the porches. As you can see here, at least one is now being used as an artist studio. During the 1960s and 70s, mainland hotels suffered and declined. The Sunset Hotel was converted to a retirement hotel, remodeled, and then sold several times. Throughout the last 10 years, under successive ownerships, renovation efforts have taken place. The hotel then sat vacant in disrepair, a victim of the economy and a sad reminder of its once former splendor. In 2015, marking the 100th year anniversary of the hotel, a total renovation has finally been completed and a healing transformation has taken place. The historic uh, hotel now breathes with a new life as the Crystal Bay Hotel. It is now considered a spiritual retreat and the hotel provides special places for wellness, healing, and spiritual growth. So the spirits of St. Petersburg was literally on this property in 2006, and it was one of the worst investigations we ever had. Uh, and in fact, the write-up that I did begins with, sometimes an investigation just does not go in accordance to plan. So we were supposed to have a local media um, outreach that wanted to go with this to the hotel, and they canceled. Then, essentially, on top of that, I was sick with a horrible sinus infection. Odyssey, my beloved and original paranormal pug, was diagnosed with cancer, and I was told the only way to determine how it went was to have exploratory surgery for him. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we had two members who canceled on attending, including our senior member and primary team sensitive, uh, who had last minute family issues. Uh, of those attending, one had been involved in a car accident earlier in the day, and of the remainder, all were new to the spirits. Now, we went into room 108, where there's not a lot of activity uh, really mentioned, but we do know that um, basically the hauntings involve... Um, let me find this again. There we go. On the first floor in the dining room is the spirit of a young woman housekeeper in the dining room. This was the apparition most actively reported by people who stayed there. Others had seen an older man known as the proprietor who was noted for his thinning hair. The third floor had an angry man and the spirit of the deceased child of a former owner of the hotel. Al Capone's wife, children, and henchmen or two were also said to manifest in the place 
throughout the building. Now I will tell you that with this EMF recording that you're watching here, when I asked if the Al Capone children were there, uh, the meter does move. I asked a few other questions and there was no response. There we go. But when I asked again about the children, uh, it does move again. So perhaps uh, room 108 might have a connection to those children. Uh, in addition to that, we have the original case files that met somewhat with the same results as the original investigation. We noted that EMF in the area that we were in was a little bit higher as it was during the first investigation. During the first investigation, we also had senses of coolness. We did have a couple of folks staying at the hotel tell us that the televisions would turn on randomly by themselves to Christian channels. And I believe two people felt as if something had touched their arms, and I even felt a cool spot.